What is the reality behind consistently seeing different combination of numbers like 2 and 7, 272, 72? Inshallah. Don't want to say that's. <clears throat> It's a beginning understanding to be conscious. So when we start talking about numbers and letters, to have a consciousness of a higher code. Mawlana Shaykh would always say that there's a message for a believer everywhere. And only later people would describe programming, programming, that a programmer leaves a message for other programmers. Because you go into the code, when they go into the code they leave little symbols and they know by the symbol who that programmer was, especially if it was famous. Like bunny ears at a certain place, they, they know there's a code there, Allah for Arifeen and those whom Salikum are seeking a path, Allah leaves many codes. Because I show you the message on the horizon and within yourself, so we said many times you drive you read a billboard, that was a message. Allah knew exactly when you were going to drive, when you were going to pass that moment, what happened in your heart so far, what was your event for the day and boom, did you look up and it was there. Even license plates, you're doing something a page comes up, a video, how many people found the video channel? Not by their intellect but I was sad, I sat down all of a sudden your video came into the feed. And then that video described what I was feeling, well, Allah didn't program that, Allah programmed everything. So the beauty of the Salik we said that came out two days ago, three days ago is a video game. Allah sending these, are you seeing them? You catch all these signs and you, you put them in your pockets, you put them in your bag and that is your life's journey. But they have to have a heart to want to see it. You go so fast, you know if you drive too fast on the freeway you don't see any of the scenery. Now go that same route that you drive every day and walk it tomorrow. You can't even, you feel lost. When I walk a path that I drove every day at 60 miles an hour you don't remember anything. You walk it you, you think I'm lost, I never see this thing, I didn't see that. What's this house there, what's that billboard over there? Because once you're walking you're observing everything around you but we're taking our life too fast and you're not stopping and walking the path, you're not trying to look for the symbols, try to enjoy the path, enjoy our life at a slower pace so that Allah's signs can be witness. Otherwise they're all passed by at a hundred miles an hour and people say, oh, there was no sign from me, from God. No every, there was every sign but we're just going too fast. But when we start speaking about numbers, that's a sign you're kind of slowing down. You're not going that fast where you don't say, I don't see any numbers. But you start to slow down and say, I was driving I saw 1111, I was driving I saw 7007, we all see all everywhere. You get your center and it says 36 and 66 and 60, <laughs> there's a code in everything. But more important is that once you become conscious of that, understanding that, you start to, if you know Arabic or know the huruf of Arabic, you start to look at the huruf and look, why is this huruf here? What is the reality of being said here? So yes, that becomes the person whom is slowing down now. When they begin to slow down then with the guidance of the sobats you're, you're fine-tuning your coordinates. So when Shaykh is saying, focus tonight. And focus on this month on eleven, many elevens will begin to appear around you. Then you begin to focus this eleven, subhanAllah eleven is one in one, it's a reflection because we passed the binary month. Allah took you to a zero in Ramadan, been nothing, threw you into the ocean of His greatness in which you fell completely after Ramadan like, what happened? I was feeling the great emanations of Ramadan and the beauty and the excitement of fasting. The tenth month was actually like, did, did we ever even do Ramadan? I think I like I missed all the tajalis, maybe Allah forgotten me and forsaken me, astaghfirullah. Because that's the ocean of vastness that He dumps the servant in, they can no longer feel anything. 
There is no emanation in the might and majesty of that ocean. But then eleventh month he's now going to reflect from the kingdom that I'm going to shake everything within you, bring out realities. Then your life is completely under that observation. When the shaykh is saying that there's, there's going to shake and every reality will become true. And somebody emailed, oh yeah I was dealing with somebody kind of fishy but last night it became really clear the reality of that person. That is the zilzila. Bravo for a person who's able to understand like that. When they're talking about everything will become clear. You'll hit it, see the hidden things of people come out so that you can understand what it's about. And then the hidden within ourselves, the bad character that comes out, the issues that I have to resolve and then the beauty of the soul and its majestic realities. So means then you focus that whole month on eleven and that reality. So try to follow us on what to focus on, not to go here and there in all different directions. InshaAllah. So this month secret is eleven. Its base was its center and, and its command center was ninety-two. Inside the reality of 92 is the secret of 29. Inside the secret of 29 is an 11. And who's standing there? Babahu, the one whom holds the Zulfiqar, he holds the secret of that 11. That when he wants to use his Zulfiqar is to open that reality. Until he dress you, bless you, make you from that reality of the Zulfiqar in which he hand the Zulfiqar into your hand and say, now be a whole man. Not these fake people with they call themselves human, they're more animalistic now but whole man. But you represent Allah's immense oceans of guidance and muhabbat and love. And the only way they can guide is that Allah gave to them the secret of La ilaha illallah and the secret of Muhammadun Rasulullah and by that sword they take away the character of people. At the same time the bad character down the reality is blossoming because all it needs is one strike that it hits the bad character. That same hit is what illuminates their heart with all realities to come out, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Is it for every letter of the Qur'an where the Ha means Hidayat, letter Wow means Wadood or is the meaning specific to a few ayahs? Forgive me I'm a, I'm a beginner. Yeah it's, it can't be generalized but for now follow what we're teaching you. Don't, don't go too far ahead because you're going to get lost like that. But Allah's knowledges are infinite. So we said before that they teach you Alif is Izzatullah. You say, okay Izzatullah then I'll look at all the Alifs in Qur'an, Allah's might and majesty is dressing that kalam. But only Allah can look again at that one kalam and open the Alif and the Alif becomes Alif, Alif Lam Fa. So no, it didn't say alif. The alif expanded its knowledge because Allah gave their heart a firasal. And when Allah want to make us a, a, a person knowledgeable, give them understandings. When Allah want them to make, make the person to be wali and awliya, give them understandings of the huruf because this is then an limitless reality. So one alif they look, Izzatullah, if they focus again that becomes alif, alif, lam fa. What the alif is? Izzatullah. What is the lam opening? This is the secret of the tongue that there's a spoken reality from Sayyidina Muhammad in that. What is the fa? Is an opening. And then it keeps expanding again 
and has infinite capability of expanding the huruf. That's why I said, control it to the understanding that we're giving, try to understand that. That this hay of hidayat, when we see the hay, it has to do with hidayat. So when you look at Allah, say, Alif is Zatullah, Lam Lam. Lam means there's a creation in the heavens and malakut that's closest to Alif. There's another Lam, this is the creation of the mulk, Atqalain, the master of the two creations is Sayyidina Muhammad and the hay of Allah is the hidayat and guidance. So actually lam, lam, hay is what they call mahsiwa Allah, is all but other than Allah So actually that's creation and the alif separates and izzat the might of Allah is separate. So even Muhammadan Rasulullah can be found in, in the kalam of Allah so that's when you don't know Allah and you can't claim to know Allah and you shouldn't be speaking on, on Allah's behalf because we don't know yet ourselves and the Muhammadan haqqaiq. But the kalam teaches us, that's why nothing attaches itself to the alif. But alif can attach with it, can always distance itself from everything. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam. Uh, forgive me, in a previous talk it was discussed that as barzakh draws closer, the characters of people become more open. Some are naughty, some are nuri. Is it predetermined or do practices help change the character? For our understanding, stick with practices change the character. Because people who take philosophy courses, they start to get into that discussion, well if it's written why should I do anything, let me just go do bad things. No, always expect that from your Lord the best was, in, was wanted from you and the best was written for you. And that it's our duty to do our best and to do the most that we can do. But as we draw near to the last days we begin to see as an observer that why people look like this? And this has to do with the realities of the grave are now showing upon people. As far as myself, my only concern is to do my best and don't worry about written. If Allah has written for me the fire, it's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to do the best, Allah may change whatever He wants to change at any moment. So don't go in the direction of what Allah has written, it's not your business, not my business. Our business and what's taught by awliyaullah is do the best that you can possibly do. And that Allah read then satisfaction to dress the servant. But if you're hearing these words and this love for Sayyidina Muhammad then there must be an immense reality upon the grave of the people whom are listening. Allah wouldn't put the person to go to Jahannam to sit and listen to Sayyidina Muhammad's haqqaiqs and realities because then you're going to go there with those realities which it's impossible for the two of them to coexist, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Most of the times it happens that a person we have been thinking about suddenly calls or visits us. Are energies pulling us in? This is intuition. Sure, and anyone whom doing energy practices this becomes more and more an understanding in the world of the shaykhs. When you fine tune your heart and you bring on all this energy and all of this madad, all of these practices, your soul is the reality of the internet. That your soul and everyone's soul is all interlinked. And that's why Allah described it, if you kill one as if you've killed the whole, you're all connected, it's all connectivity. You're seeing it as separate because of physicalities. So the real internet is the souls. That's why you do harm to one, all the chain, all the web will feel it and all of them will, will be accountable by Allah So then imagine this connectivity is that you lose only your physical but you want to enter this connectivity of your soul. And that's how their uloom and their knowledge is. You google outside, the shaykh googles inside. 
a subject comes immediately goes on onto their web and the answer come from the different shaykhs hearts. We said before blockchain technology is not something they thought of, Allah brought the Qur'an like that. They don't centralize it in one book, they gave that to the Christians. They took the book, they hid the book, they changed the book and then they reinterpreted everything. You think Allah going to bring His holy speech like that? He brought it in blockchain that, I'm going to make all these to be hafiz and all of them will be guarding and be guardians of the Qur'an. And any one person try to change a letter, there'll be a billion other ones beating him up, saying, what are you doing? It's not written like that and immediately it'll take out and debug the system. So blockchain came from the heavens. Same with the shaykhs, they're teaching, you're going on to this web of souls that are all interconnected. We say, oh their power is not centralized to one, that if that one fall the whole system of haqqaiq falls, but they're all decentralized on a chain. And wherever the shaykh needs to be pulling from of realities of madad and imdad and support has to be through that whole chain of 124,000 only Allah. And they send their madad for every subject that coming, every reality, every energy and every condition that is necessary inshaAllah. That's why these technologies show much greater realities. Allah didn't re reveal it for Toshiba to make a CD and a telephone. That was the dunya somebody grabbed it but that was to show us the immensity of the heavenly kingdom. It wasn't to make a phone and sell it for billions of dollars but the immensity of the heavenly kingdom and what the souls are capable of, inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. The, uh, the energy we experience from these nasheeds, does it carry the energy from the presence of the shaykh? And along with the energy of the words? The energy of the shaykh? Yeah, presence of the shaykh. Sure, every, everything that's being done is, a, is an energy. The recitation has its energy that as soon as you're making the recitations the energy is manifesting. So those whom their hearts beginning to open, they see the colors of these manifestations. The salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad open beautific green lights. As you recite them, these lights are opening and dressing the servant. They recite it and it opens and dresses the servant. Then there's the lights of the support and the madad that the shaykh and the associations held by the shaykh, they immediately have a madad and support as soon as the associations begin. Those energies move into the homes and that's what we talked about the holy hadith of the circles of zikr. Now Allah made everyone whom listening at home their home to be a circle of paradise. So anyone who wants their house to be paradise was make the circles of zikr. Because everybody was going to a zawiyah and they weren't doing the zikr in their home. Allah changed it for the blessings and the barakah. He said, as a matter of fact, everything closed, do your zikr at home. Now everybody's home became circles of paradise. Put it on your YouTube, put it on, on a nice loud sound and that house becomes a circle of paradise all the way to Arshur Rahman. And the angels asked at that hadith, oh you're giving all these gifts but there's one who's really rotten who's not from amongst them. And Allah said, because of that barakah dress them. So imagine then the immensity of the power of what that cleans in a home for even just some guest walking by and how that barakah stays now in the homes for circles of paradise. Why? Because Allah want to dress and bless the people of dhikrullah from what's coming onto the earth. And shut one thing and he knows where it's going to go, he make a condition because he has a door that he wants to open. He brought the condition down, his might and majesty and opened the door for buyut that I'm going to bring these lights into your home so that you'll be safe from these difficulties that are coming upon the earth. So there's immense wisdom in whatever Allah orders upon, especially the people of dhikrullah whom they have immense love for Allah's might and majesty inshaAllah.
Assalamualaikum Shaykh. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. Is swaying back and forth during zikr something that should be immediately recognized and stopped? My assumption is it is a sign of energy buildup, but also enough showing inability to control oneself. Yeah, you don't want to do it too out of control but again like you said the energy is coming and is moving, moving the, the soul and not much you can do but to move the soul and it's moving from the vibration of that energy and the immensity of the energy. And become much stronger as, as the practices become stronger and stronger. But uh, inshaAllah just try to be free with just a slight movement but not when they start to go all over the place and stand up and, and to become like a dancing. So no, this is just for people who are living at home and doing at home and the energy and the vibration is moving their soul, many begin to shake and that's why you just train through it, you breathe through it and try to keep you know your energy in a constant place and ground yourself, inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah How do you cope when others are draining you? Yeah, how to cope when others are draining you is the isolation and the importance of, of, of seeking a time away from people. That the pandemic are people, you know the sickness are people. When, when everybody isolates they can rejuvenate and fix themselves, build their energies, build everything. And then as soon as they get back together with people all the cross-contamination begin, all the anxieties and angers and, and characteristics. So once we learn how to khalwa dar anjuman, this is the principles of Naqshbandiyya on the 11 principles for Mawlana Shah Naqshband, go to the Nur Muhammad website and type in 11 principles of Naqshbandiyya. And khalwa dar anjuman is to be secluded even amongst the people. So means that they do their tafakkur, they do their contemplation, they try not to talk too much out in public and they understand when they go they have to go home, they have to shower, they have to isolate from people and they have to rejuvenate and reconnect their hearts. So that not to be depleted and to be so much a social person that you're just talking, 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 talking and all of a sudden your, your heart is, is empty at the end. So it's a matter of a discipline on how to balance oneself and that's why the tariqah was based on that. That Mawlana Shah Naqshaban didn't want everybody running to the woods forever, otherwise everybody would have been living in the woods and that would have been the established way of the tariqah. But the immensity of this power is that keep yourself busy amongst the people and balanced on how to isolate while you're amongst people and to leave also the presence of people. That way you have a stronger discipline and more power coming on to your soul because it's harder. If you take the harder path, more reward from Allah If you run out into the woods then it's just you trying to fix you and you benefit nobody because you're just hiding in the woods some bears and deers, maybe enjoy your energy and that's it. But most important is that you purify yourself, perfect yourself and then this energies become a benefit to your family, to your community inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzata amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basir Surat al-Fatiha.